our grateful Baba. Can we rise up and show our gratitude to the Lord for this wonderful day? The Lord that has kept us till today, He has given us opportunity to end this month well. We started well, and God made us to end the month of August well. Give God the thanks and say, Father, I am grateful unto you. I am grateful for health. I am grateful for life. I am grateful that I am healthy and healthy. I can hear. I can see. I can walk. I can express myself. It can only be God. If not for God for us, what shall we say this morning? Our God is faithful. Our God is wonderful. He is the mighty God. There is no like him. He is the incomparable God. He can never be reduced. He can never be limited. He remains God from everlasting to everlasting. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Give him thanks and give him praise. And say, Father, we are grateful. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. You can now sit down. For that wonderful rendition by our choir, we are grateful to God, and we are also grateful even for their preparation. The Lord will continue to bless you and increase your anointing greatly in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you alive for himself and keep you healthy. You will continue to be relevant in the hands of the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. God is faithful. This morning, we want to look at the theme that says, destined for increase. All of us here, we are destined for increase. And that Bible passage that we have read, Genesis 1 to 8, is a familiar passage to all of us. It shows the creation of the heaven and the earth, which God did. But for this moment, I want to give thanks to God for this privilege to minister God's word to us. You know, God does not work with numbers. God works with few people that are prepared, that their heart is prepared to receive from him. And he can take you to places. He can expand your coast. There's nothing God cannot do with few. Only few that sing with him. So I just want you at this moment to prepare your heart to receive from God. Talk to God and say, Father, speak to me personally. I just want to hear your voice. I just want to hear you. I don't want to hear man. Man is just a representative of God. But God himself can reach out to you where you are seated. And he can minister the word to you. And the word will come to you directly. It will be as if God actually knows what you are passing through. Just ask him and say, Father, reach out to me. I want to hear you and bless me with your word. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. For the leadership of the church. For this opportunity to share God's word with God's people. I say thank you, sir. God will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. God will increase his church more and more. We will never be few. We will continue to increase. We continue to expand. This year, 2024, we are celebrating. What are we celebrating? 20 years of existence of our church. This God is awesome. This God is wonderful. And that is where we are going today. God can start with small and it turn it big. You can never start big. It takes a process. You know, God is not a magician. Our God works part time. Our God knows what to do part time. He can take you from nothing and he can sit you among princes. That is God for you. So this God that you have come to meet tonight, it will increase you on all sides. It will increase you. You will never be few. Your children will not be few. Your children, children will not be few. 
our church will not be few. It will increase us spiritually and numerically in the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme for this year is divine flourish. And our Bible text is taken from the book of Matthew 13, 31 and 32. I quickly read it. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seed. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among us, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the hair come and lodge in the branches thereof. God has given his word to his servant to us that it is our year to flourish. And I pray for you that you will flourish in the name of Jesus. So to this message is related to that thing. And that says to us, they are destined for increase. And that is what you are looking at. You and I are destined for increase, for lifting, for greatness. I pray for you that God's work coming to you will work on you and do the work of increase in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Destined for increase. I quickly, we are looking at different items that is related to this thing. The first thing we are looking at is secrets. What are those secrets that you need to know that can launch you into this divine increase? What is that secret? The first thing we are looking at, God's program for man. You have your own program. But God's program for you is the best. No matter the program that you have for yourself. You have to work in line with God's program for you. So the first item is first God's program for man. Man was created in God's image. In the image of God created him, male and female. So there was nothing that was created that was not created by God. There's a purpose for God creating us in his image. So you carry the image of God wherever you step to. You are carrying the capacity of God, the ability of God. This, the, you are carrying God himself. Because you are going in the realm of his image. So you are conscious that you are not ordinary. You are conscious of the fact that God himself has deposited something in you that is not ordinary. It's not something that can be bought with money. You carry God's image. You can imagine God forming us from cradle when nobody even knew. Even from photos, nobody knew that we were there. And that photos will begin to grow and grow. And all of a sudden, we will say, congratulations, a baby has arrived. That is God for you. It can only be God. It goes beyond science. Science only works in team, in line with God's program. In line with God's plan for man. So, that formation is a pattern. It's a pattern that you need to follow. You need to tune to. When God said to us in Jeremiah 29, 11, he said, I know the plan I have towards you. The plan of good and not evil. The plan to give you an expected end, to give you a brighter future. You see reasons why you need to work in tune with God. Why you need to surrender and submit to him totally. So that he can take you from nothing. And you become something. God is working on you. And he will continue to work for you. So God has destined you. He has destined me for continuous increase. 
The program of God to man is continuous. It's not static. It cannot be reduced. That is the way God has programmed it. You are supposed to move progressively. For instance, look at your feet. Where is it facing? It's facing the front, isn't it? If it's facing the back, that is there's abnormality. Something has gone wrong. And if your feet are facing forward, movement forward, never backward. You go forward, you never retard. You never go backward. That is the way God has designed it. So God is expecting you to step into your glory. He's expecting you to move into glory. Not to be retarded. You will not be retarded. In the name of Jesus. That progressive movement that God has designed for your life will never be reversed. So God's plan for you. Walk in line with God's plan for you. And the second thing, a little beginning is designed for us. A little beginning. That anchor verse of Matthew 13, verses 31 to 34, it shows us the parable of the Lord Jesus of a mustard seed. I was supposed to bring a mustard seed this morning, but I forgot. One way or the other, you will have seen it. How insignificant it is. If you don't look at it closely, you may not even see it. Mustard seed grow to become a mighty tree. A mighty tree that men can rest on. That birds can fly on for. That blessed can actually relax there. That is what God does. God does not despise a day of small beginning. The book of Zechariah chapter 4, verses 9 and 10 says to all, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hand was also completed. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who despises the day of small thing? Men will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. With those seven, they are the highs of the Lord, which run to and fro to the earth. And the book of Job 8, 7 saying, Your beginning may be small, but your latter part shall greatly increase. The foundation cannot be despised. The foundation cannot be despised. So there must be a time of foundation. When God created man, he created Adam alone. And God saw something missing in the life of Adam. And God said it is not good for a man to be alone. And God brought a woman. And the Adam said, this is the bone, the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bone. I shall be called a woman. Through those two people, the whole world. Men, all of us are seated here. We are created through them. You cannot see how God formed a small beginning. God started with just two people. And how many can we count in the whole world now? Uncountable. So God does not want you to despise the day of small beginning. Our youth in the house, our teen in the house, there's a pattern now, a trend now. You, don't, you can't follow it. You can't follow the trend of gambling. It can only ruin your future. It can ruin your life totally. You cannot follow the trend of internet fraud. They call it Yahoo, Yahoo, whatever it is. There must be a time of small beginning. Parents, your own parents, they all started small. And here they are today. They have success. All because they work in line with God's plan for them. So there will always be small beginning. And if there is going to be small beginning, then what God, God is this? What God telling you? You have a role to play. So we look at responsibility that God is expecting from us. Number one responsibility is time management. That Genesis 1, 1 to 5, we see how God managed the time. Everything God created, he made there within six days. He managed the time to the extent that God created everything. He needed to create within time, within space of time, within the space of time that he had. He did not exceed 
the six days. On the seventh day, the Bible said, and God rested. So those six days, God used them wisely. So you need to learn how to manage your time. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 say, there is a time for everything and a season of, for every activity under the heaven. So you have to account for each day God has given you. That composer that said, time now money, oh, time now money. A time that is wasted can never be recovered. So you cannot waste any time. He said, use your time well. No mago, mago. Nothing like that. The time that is not well utilized can be wasted. God is talking to you. So the first responsibility is management of time. And the second thing is new discovery. New discovery. First Corinthians 2 9 says to us, But as it is written, I has not seen. Yes, has not had. Neither has it crossed the heart of men what God has prepared for his own people. There's something that God has prepared for you. Deuteronomy 29 29 says, Every hidden thing belongs to God. But that which is revealed to you, there is need for discovery. Your eyes need to open. Your spiritual eyes need to open to see what God is actually doing. And for you to launch into it, to tap into it, and to be blessed by it. So what God is telling you is that you need to discover. New things to discover in your career. There are new things to discover in your academics. There are new things to discover in your business. There are new things to discover in the market. It can only come from God. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it crossed the earth. He said, every hidden thing belongs to who? To God. That which is given to you, that which is revealed to you, belongs to you, not only you, and to your children, children. So God needs to open your eyes to a new discovery. In the time past, let's quickly see Hebrew 1, 1 and 2. In the time past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Verse 2, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he had appointed here of all things, by whom also he made the universe. Our God is not static. Our God does not expect his own children to, to be static or to be stranded. So God is expecting you, for you to actually enjoy this divine increase that he has already launched you into, that he has already provided for you, you need a discovery of new things. Joseph, for instance, we all know the story of Joseph in his father's house. He was a dreamer. Isn't it? He was a dreamer. To the extent that his own brothers envied him because of the dream. He was actually telling them, I had a dream. The other time he said, I had another dream. And he was telling them. He was a dreamer. They sold him into slavery. It took him 13 years, 13, 13 good years of formation. God was doing something in his life. God was actually programming him and saying, no, you can't stop as a dreamer. There's something that is still hidden somewhere that you need to discover that can actually launch you to the top, that can launch you to your greatness. You need that to discover. You need to discover it. And God said to him, you are not only a dreamer, you are an interpreter. Somebody say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was put in the prison. There was no time that Joseph complained. There was no time that Joseph grumbled. And he had a bitter experience from the hands of his sibling. They planned to kill him. That did not work. They sold him into Ishmaelite. 
and they sold him into slavery. He found himself in Potiphar's house. From Potiphar's house to where? To prison. He was in the prison. And the new discovery began to manifest. Potiphar's officers, the two of them, were also thrown into the prison. You know God, he has his plan for man. He works in a mysterious way. He works in a wonderful way. Those people were thrown in the prison. All because God wanted to put, to take Joseph somewhere. They all had dreams. And by the time he woke up and he saw them, he saw them depressed. What did he tell them? He said to them, what happened to the two of you? Why are you sad? Why do you look so morose? And they said they had dreams. Is that the problem? She had the dreams. He has never interpreted dream before. But that particular time, because every hidden thing belongs to God, that which is given to him belongs to him and his children today. He did what no one has ever done. He interpreted the dream to the first one. And that one was very glad, excited. So at last, I'm going to be reinstated, he told him. And the other one shared his own dream. So awful. I said, I'm sorry. Within three days now, your head will be cut off. And it happened like that. That same interpretation, I said, you can never be static. You can never be on a spot. The Taronomai once six said, you dwell too long on this mountain. It's time for you to move forward. So God is saying to someone, when he wants to move you forward, no one can stop you. When God decides to move you forward, you cannot be stopped. No power of darkness. No matter how many they are, let them come like a flood. Let your enemy come like a flood. The Bible said the Spirit of God will raise a standard against them. So they cannot stop you. And he did that interpretation, not knowing that he was planning for his future. And he said to, he said to one of the officers and said, remember me. Don't forget me. He forgot him for the space of two years because it was not time. When the right time appeared, the king himself had dream continuously. Two different dreams that made that had the same meaning. But no one in Egypt could interpret it. That is the realm God is taking you to. God is taking you to the realm that you become a problem solver. That only you will be the solution to that problem. In your family, only you will become the solution to that problem. Even in the society, in the nation, God is taking you to that level. That only you become solution. So there was another dream. And the king was disturbed. And the king was disturbed. And the she butler remember he sinned and said, yeah, I have sinned. There's someone running away in the prison. For the sin he did not commit. They put him in the prison. The power that be put him in the prison for nothing. He had that prison experience so that he could be on top. Any experience that you are having now, either it is pleasant or unpleasant. Use it as an opportunity. I said, Joseph, never look morose. He was never sad. His countenance never changed. He began to praise God, to worship God the way he used to. And when the time came, the Lord elevated him. A new discovery happened in his life. He became the prime minister of Egypt. Don't forget that Egypt was the world leader at that time. Egypt was the world leader. He became number two in command. You know what the king said? I quickly read it. Genesis 41, 39. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, says God, can someone say God? Can someone say God? Can someone say God? He had a father, Jacob. Pharaoh did not recognize his father. He did not recognize any of his brothers for that singular gift. He says, since God, 
since God has made you, Pharaoh said, has made all this thing known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. Hallelujah. Amen. That is God for you. And Pharaoh recognized God in his life. I pray that even your enemy will recognize God in your life. Even in that organization, the envy of that organization will recognize God in your life. The second person, Ruth, a Moabite. Ruth got married to Malam, the son of Elmelech. All of them died. Elmelech died. The two sons died. And Naomi was left alone. So Naomi himself did not see a future. She did not even think something good could come out of her. But Ruth discovered something in the life of Naomi that Naomi did not even know she carried. She discovered God. She discovered God in the life of Naomi. And Ruth said, no, I cannot go back from you. There is something you carry. You carry God. You see, the presence of God in your life cannot be underrated. Anywhere you step, you step in the majesty of the most high God. It is not about you. It is about God you carry. Now may carry God. Ruth saw that God in him. And she made up her mind. He said, I will go with you. Come with me. You may think you don't have a future. I can see a future coming from you. He said, your God will be my God. He saw God in, his, in her life. Your God will be my God. And where you die, I will die. She made up her mind. She saw something in the life of Naomi that Naomi herself did not discover. She saw that God. Was she disappointed for taking that step? Was she disappointed? No, she was not. She was not. She said, don't persuade me to go back. Your God I have discovered is enough for me. He's more than ten sons to me. I will follow you. Your lifting begins the day you have a new discovery of God in your life. A new discovery of who you are. So he follow. Look what happened. Let's see Matthew 1 verse 5. And Solomon began Boaz. That is genealogy of Jesus Christ. Solomon began Boaz of Rechab. And Boaz began Obed of Ruth. Did her name not appear in the genealogy of Jesus? And Obed began Jesse. Who is Jesse? The father of who? Of David. And Jesus came in what lineage? In the lineage of David. So we are telling you, God has a plan for you. Another thing is, be equipped with power. In this journey of greatness, of lifting, of increase, you are to be equipped with power. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpion, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Many go to wrong places looking for power. When Jesus said, I've already given it to you, he said, I give unto you. What he has given unto you cannot be taken away from you. That power that people run about from, and they do any kind of evil to get that power, it's already deposited in you. You are the carrier of the power of the most high God. Jesus said, I give you power. You will tread upon serpent and scorpion. Dangerous animals. God is saying to someone that even dangerous animals will bow before you. Because you are a carrier of God himself. You are a carrier of the most high God. So you are a carrier of him and you have his own power embodied in you, deposited in you. 
So where you step to, enemy bow. When Ephesians 2, 6 says, you are seated with Christ where? In heavenly places. You are far, far above principality and power. No rulers of darkness can, can actually reduce you. God has given you that power. So God is expecting you to launch into that power. So God is saying to someone now, hindrances, there are hindrances to this divine increase that you need to work against. Number one is ingratitude. Ingratitude. You know why many died in the wilderness? Because of ingratitude. They did not make it to the promised land because of ingratitude. They did not see even God, the God of wonders, the God of miracle. They did not even appreciate God in their life. How God saved them while others were weeping in Egypt. In Goshen, they were living fine. While others were crying in Egypt, in Goshen, they were living fine. He didn't see, they didn't see God. He took them through a process. They went through the Red Sea. They, it, they didn't see God. They passed through the Red Sea. They saw their enemy drown in the same Red Sea. That was a passage to them. But they did not see God. Ingratitude can rob you of your increase. So God is telling someone, be grateful. Genesis 15. That is the second one. Inability to see opportunity. The first one is ingratitude. Psalm 28 verse 5 says, Because they regard not the works of the Lord, not the oppression of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them. He shall destroy them. You will not be destroyed because you will not be in, ungrateful to God. The second thing is inability to see opportunity. The Taronomite 30, 11 say, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Somebody will choose life. You will see opportunity. Opportunity are not far away from you. Opportunity are very close to you. The Lord will open your eyes to see. Her guy, for instance, was in the wilderness, wandering away, looking for water. And God of opportunity opened her eyes and said, see the well. See the well of water that is beside you. And she was able to see. The Lord will open your eyes. You will see opportunity. Inability to see opportunity can rob you of this increase that God has promised us since the beginning of the year. Then the, another thing is unbelief. Matthew 13, 58 say, and he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Jesus went to Nazareth. He had a mind to actually perform more miracles because he went to his own people. His own people should be able to welcome him, to accept him. Familiar spirits robbed them of that opportunity. Robbed them of that privilege. They look at him and say, is this not Jesus, the son of carpenter? Uh-uh. Mary's son. We knew why he, how he was growing up. He grew among us. You know, the Bible says he could not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Don't allow unbelief. Many of you should come to worship truly. But ask yourself, have you ever prepared your heart and said, I'm coming to worship God, to receive from him that day? Has it ever occurred to you? Or is it just a routine? Do you just see it as a routine? They ask us to come every Sunday morning and we come. And you come and you return the same way you came. Because you never receive anything. Or because of unbelief. God is talking to someone this morning. Arise and wake yourself up. Wake yourself up. Don't allow unbelief to rob you. Don't allow unbelief to destroy you. Don't allow unbelief to rob you of this divine flourish that God has given us from the beginning of the year. God who gave the word at the beginning of the year, he actually wanted us to flourish. Thank God that we have started. Do you know we still have four months left? So it's not late for you to discover yourself. It's not late for you to launch into God's plan for us this year. That is our year of divine flourish. It's not late for you. You can actually start now. Within that four months, it took just three months for Obededom's life to be transformed. What is it that God cannot do? 
The same act of the covenant that was in Abinadab house for 20 good years and performed nothing. Enter Obededom's house just for three months. And what happened? There was transformation. There was miracle. To the extent that the king could hear about it. They began to talk about it and say, ah, ah, this is a miracle. So can we rise up this moment? Just rise up on your feet. God has promised us increase. God has promised to flourish. Has flourished us into the realm of flourish. What is it that this God cannot do? Can you bless God for his word? Just go ahead and bless him. Bless him for his word to us. Bless him this moment. And say, Father, thank you. Of a truth, it is my season of divine increase. And I will increase. Every hindrance is, can you begin to reject it? What is that ingratitude? Hindrance is, is it uh, ingratitude? Ask God to deliver you. To deliver you. Many people have even given you just a cup of water. To say thank you has become difficult. Talk less of someone who denied himself to train you. He trained you out of his own struggling. And what did you pay in return? God is saying to someone, just ask God for mercy this morning. Mercy this moment. Inability to see opportunity. Ask God to deliver you. Every unbelief, unbelief robbed the people of old of the promised land. Unbelief will not rob you of the promised land. God who has promised, he will fulfill it. He will fulfill it. Can you begin to launch into that recovery now? Launch into that recovery of increase. Launch into that recovery. Your eyes must be open. Your spiritual eyes must be open. Your spiritual ears must be attentive. You must hear God clearly. God must speak to you personally of what he wants to do. Bless the name of the Lord. There will be increase. Our church started even 20 years ago. Small. They started small. Maybe renting a place somewhere. Later, small tent. From small tent, a bigger tent. Here we are now in a big building. God can start small with you. Don't ever, de despite that day of small beginning, God does not want you to be on that spot. He's taking you somewhere. Can you say, Father, take me to my place of increase. Launch me into my place of increase. Give God the thanks this moment. And bless his holy name. Is there anyone that wants to make a decision for this God? Pharaoh saw this God in the life of Joseph. Ruth saw this God in the life of Naomi. Do you want to make a decision now? All this success we are talking about, it can only be found in the Lord Jesus. It is in him there is life. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. It can only be seen in him. If you want to take a decision, just come on the pulpit now and say, Father, I take this decision this moment and I go for you. I go for you. I'm not asking you to raise up your hand. Just come on the pulpit. Come and touch the pulpit and say, Father, I am for Christ and for Christ alone. Give God the thanks for what he has done this moment. He's the mighty God. We give you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah.